<laughs> Albert, you okay? He's having a heart attack. At any given moment, there are more than 3,000 people in the UK on the list waiting for a heart transplant. On average, 22 people die each day waiting for a heart transplant. There are not enough donors to ever possibly satisfy society's need for donors. In an attempt to solve this problem, scientists are developing and searching for materials that can be used as a substitute for damaged or faulty biological tissues in the heart. One specific problem with hearts that scientists are researching is difficulties with the function of heart valves. It puts a lot of stress for heart valves and over time can cause strain on heart valves especially if a person was born with any conditions that would make the heart valve even slightly less than perfect in form and function. This video can give you an idea of what the function of heart valves looks like. There are many properties of heart valve tissue that make heart valves optimal for the purpose they serve. The inner layer of a heart valve is made of a collagen and elastin, giving it capability to change in response to large forces from blood flow, while the outer layer is coated with endothelial cells to promote smooth blood flow. These properties complicate the heart valve and make it unique from other vascular structures. The biological and mechanical properties of a heart valve contribute to the essential function of facilitating the unidirectional flow of blood while maximizing flow rate and minimizing flow resistance. In this video, we will discuss the technology of artificial heart valves and how scientists attempt to emulate the perfect form and properties of natural heart valves to help those suffering with heart conditions. Currently, most heart valve transplants are bioprosthetic valves meaning the prosthetic comes from another living creature. Homographs are human aortic valves preserved at temperatures of negative 112 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, while xenografts are developed from either pig or cow hearts. Both homographs and xenografts are mounted on a fabric-covered plastic frame called a stent. Bioprosthetic failure can be separated into two categories, changes that occur before implanting the prosthetic and changes that happen after. Before implantation, the various treatments and conditions bioprosthetics are subjected to can cause the aortic valve to narrow, distortion of collagen, and unwanted growth of calcium phosphate crystals. After implantation, the immune system of the host presents several problems. The host antibodies enter the bioprosthetic, which can lead to collagen breakdown and unwanted buildup of calcium and white blood cells. After 10 years, these problems are at least 10% more likely to appear in young people because of their stronger immune systems. In addition, most bioprosthetic heart valves only have a lifetime of 10 to 15 years, and often less for younger patients. Artificial heart valves are made of titanium, graphite, pyrolytic carbon, and polyester. The titanium is used for the housing, lock rings, and wire. The graphite coated with pyrolytic carbon is used for the bi-leaflets or mechanical heart valve, and the 100% pyrolytic carbon is used for the inner ring. The sewing cuff, used to attach the valve to the heart, is made of double velour polyester. The titanium is usually created by an outside manufacturer and made from machined bar stock. The polyester comes in the form of tubes and is usually deburred by the supplier and or valve manufacturer. However, potentially the most important part of creating an artificial heart valve is the process of creating the pyrolytic carbon that coats the bileaflets and forms the inner ring. This process is referred to as a fluidized bed process. The fluidized bed consists of small ceramic particles and several solid pieces that are to be coated through this process. A levitating gas, usually methane, then creates random motion of parts within the bed while all the elements are heated to a temperature between 1200 and 1400 degrees Celsius. Once heated, the levitating gas, methane, which is a hydrocarbon gas, is broken down into carbons. As the temperature is lowered, these carbons recrystallize on whatever solid surface is available. In the context of artificial heart valves, this fluidized bed process results in the deposition of carbons onto solid bileaflets, which are referred to as the substrates during a fluidized bed process. This final deposition is known as pyrolysis, hence the name pyrolytic carbon and yields a carbon coating with a unique structure and many desirable properties. The structure and resulting properties of pyrolytic carbon will be elaborated upon later. The manufacturing process can be broken down into four main steps. Step one is creating most of the parts through a third party, excluding the polyester cuffs, which are made through a sewing process. Step two is in assembling the parts, which takes place in a decontaminated room. Here, the leaflets are attached to the inner rings, which are then placed in the housing or outer ring. Step three is performed simultaneously with step two, in which the sewing cuffs are made. Once completed, a specialized heating process is used to form the cuffs around the valve. The valves are then mounted into a rotator assembly. Once the valves are made, they are then steam sterilized in a double plastic container. This is step four. Next, a biological indicator is used to test for bacteria. If none are present, the valve is then packaged.
Figure A shows pyrolytic carbon while figure B shows graphite. As you can see, the two structures are fairly similar and are both composed of multiple graphene sheets. However, the obviously distorted structure of the pyrolytic carbons results in the presence of covalent bonding, while the graphene sheets in graphite are only held together by weak, non-bonding forces. Pyrolytic carbon's disorganized structure creates folds and wrinkles that make pyrolytic carbon stronger and more durable. These properties are perfect for the high-stress environment of the cardiovascular system. Additionally, some other key properties of pyrolytic carbon are that it is anisotropic, thermally conductive, and diamagnetic. Possibly the most important relevant property of pyrolytic carbon is that it is biocompatible and thromboresistant, meaning that it resists blood clots, because pyrolytic carbons do not promote the adhesion of blood cells to its surface. The strength and durability that result from pyrolytic carbon's unique and disorganized structure make pyrolytic carbon an ideal coating in artificial heart valves. Pyrolytic carbon coated heart valves, or mechanical valves for short, offer several advantages over bioprosthetic valves. The most significant advantage is perhaps the longer lifetime of a mechanical valve. Mechanical valves usually last for the entirety of a patient's life, while bioprosthetic usually lasts only 10 to 15 years. This makes a mechanical valve an att extremely attractive choice for younger people seeking a heart prosthetic. Second, mechanical valves offer much better blood flow than bioprosthetics. If a bioprosthetic valve is used with a stent, bioprosthetics vastly underperform compared to a native valve or mechanical valve. Bioprosthetics without stents perform marginally better, but can be difficult to place and are sometimes not usable. The only advantage a bioprosthetic offers over a mechanical valve is a lower risk of blood coagulation, but this problem is re remedied easily with the use of blood thinners. In addition, patients can usually hear a click as a mechanical valve pumps blood. Some like this as it mimics a heartbeat and reassures them the valve is functioning, while others consider it to be annoying or disturbing. Evaluating the entire idea of a heart valve in the process of creating one, it is clear that pyrolytic carbons epitomize the material science and engineering triangle. The fluidized bed process for creating pyrolytic carbon creates the disorganized graphene structure. The structure in turn results in the strength and durability of the pyrolytic carbon that makes it so perfectly suited for use in the cardiovascular system. These aspects are all in complete synchronization, and it is fascinating to see how they come together to form such an integral part of an important medical product. Thanks, Pyrolytic Carbons, for making a durable heart valve.